Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Sitil and you're watching Sitil MD where I create loads of stuff and also talk about a lot of useful stuff. In today's video, I'm going to make a nightgown. You know one of those vintage nightgowns with like frills at the front. Very easy, very simple to follow. No pattern needed. You follow your own body size and it's so easy to make. And I hope you enjoy this video and keep watching if it's something that you think you would want to make. I used an old bed sheet that I had lying around which had like a wine stain on it and then when I got the wine stain out sort of still has like a blotchy brown spot so it doesn't look nice when I spread the bed sheet but what better way to make use of your bed sheet and for those subscribers that are returning I'm so sorry and thank you so much for being patient with me because I have been MIA or missing in action for the last two weeks and it's because I took the time off to spend the time with my family and we really had a good time and even now you can like hear some background noise because the kids are watching TV while I record this video and get it up and loaded and going but I am back guys and my next few videos I'm going to talk about a lot of mindfulness so do keep watching I hope you enjoyed it and if you did I do appreciate if you hit the like button below and without wasting any time let's get started the first thing I did was iron out my bed sheet to get as much as wrinkles as I could out of it so that when I cut my fabric it would be even Next, I find a t-shirt that I loved and I copied the front and back onto the bed sheet by folding it in half and then cutting it on the fold. First, we copy the top front and then we're going to copy the top back. But for the top front, place the t-shirt on the fold of the fabric and copy it around while leaving half an inch of seam allowance. I drew the neck of the nightgown a little bigger and I brought in this armhole a little bit just so it'll be more comfortable when I'm wearing it at night. Cut the fabric out and use it as a template to make the back piece. I couldn't really decide if I wanted the back of my neck to be lower, deeper or higher so I went with the higher neck and instead I had to cut a slit at the back of the neck so that I could fit my head through the nightgown. I labeled my pieces to avoid any confusion and next it was time to cut out the dress pieces for the front and back. Copy the bottom half of the dress while leaving about 5 inches from the fold of the fabric to the fold of your t-shirt. Don't forget to leave half an inch of seam allowance at the top. Draw the length of the dress as much as you want according to the length that you are comfortable with. And do an A-line so that the, the dress piece flares out a little bit from the armhole. In the end, I cut two pieces of the exact same shape for the front and the back of the dress piece on the fold. This is where I made a slit on my back of the neck. Alternatively, you could just make a bigger neck so you could put your head through the dress. Onto the sewing, sew the shoulder seams right sides facing at half an inch seam allowance. Always remember to start with a back stitch and end with a back stitch. Use an overlocker to overlock the edges or a zigzag stitch if you don't have an overlocker to avoid fraying. Next, open the seam and do a top stitch. I always do a top stitch about 1 8 of an inch away from the actual seam so that 
it strengthens the seam and it looks really nice and professional. Next, I sewed a basting stitch on the top, front and back of my dress pieces. A basting stitch basically means sewing at an extended length of stitches on both the front and back so that we can later gather the top pieces of both the front and back dress. I added a bias tape by opening up the bias tape that I had and then folding it in half and sandwiching the bias tape in between this, the yoke piece of the top and back piece of the dress with the bottom part of the dress. You could also use a really pretty lace if you want for this tab. Don't forget to turn back the stitch length on the sewing machine back to the normal length that you normally use like 2.4 or 2.5 because if you did a basting stitch through this you will have to redo the stitches all over again and then remove the basting thread so that it doesn't look too messy with lots of thread lying around and also overlock or zigzag the raw edge. I also added a bias tape to the armhole by attaching the bias tape right sides facing to the wrong side of the armhole because when after I sewed around I wanted the bias tape to kind of fold towards the front of the dress. You'll see what I mean when I'm done with this. Sew the bias tape towards to the armhole at half an inch of seam allowance. Snip the excess seam on the armhole really close but do not snip the actual stitches otherwise it'll all come open and then fold the bias tape twice on itself so that the bias tape ends up on the front of the dress and make two stitches, one very close to the armhole outer and one very close to the armhole inner. Next, I repeated almost the same steps with the back slit and the neck of the dress except this time putting, attaching the wrong, wrong side of the bias tape to the right side of the dress so that the bias tape would be folded towards the inside so it's not seen as much. This step can be a little tricky but I promise you take your time and it will all be worth it in the end. And as I said before, instead of using a bias tape, you could use a pretty little lace which would make your dress look even more vintage and just absolutely pretty. And voila, the only thing I have left now to do is to sew the side seams. And of course, once I sewed the side seams, I ran it over with an overlocker. You could use a zigzag stitch if you do not have an overlocker. I finished up my bottom hem by folding the fabric on itself just once because I had actually ran the bottom hem under the overlocker you could run a zigzag stitch through or just fold it twice and here you go it's all finished it's so comfortable and i especially love that i used a full cotton fabric that was a bed sheet and it's so comfortable i mean if your com bed sheet's comfortable enough to sleep in then it's definitely comfortable to wear
and that's it guys thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for stopping by i do hope you enjoyed this video and if you did do not forget to hit the like button below and subscribe also hit the bell notification button so that you get notified every time i post a video i post a video every wednesday with that said i hope you have a wonderful wonderful day ahead and a wonderful new year i'll see you in the new year bye guys <laughs>